So you're thinking about running, but not sure how to take the first step. My name is Brian Patterson, and I'm here to help. Welcome to Brian's Rompod. So, hey there, runners and wellness warriors. Welcome to back to another episode of Brian's Run Pod, where we dive into all things running, fitness, and the holistic practices that keep us moving strong week after week. I'm your host, Brian Patterson, and today we've got a real treat for you. Our guest today is someone who's been mastering the art of mindful movement for over two decades. She's a seasoned vinyasa yoga teacher with more than a thousand hours of training across a range of yoga styles from Ashtanga to aerial yoga. She studied under some of the most respected names in the yoga world, including David Swenson and Rodney Yee, and even spent time in Mysore, India, honing her craft under the guidance of Sharatha Yang Rangaswamy. I hope I've got that right. Her name is Nikki Yazbek, and she is here to share her incredible journey, insights on the transformative power of yoga, and how yes, how you, yes, you can find your personal edge on the mat and in life. Whether you're a runner looking to enhance your flexibility, build strength, or just breathe a little easier, this is the episode for you. So lace up your running shoes and give a warm welcome and get ready for some information. And let's dive into and say welcome to Nikki. Welcome. So everyone gets I love that. that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, someone wants to describe that as being quite cute anyway how are you today nikki have you had a good day i'm doing great yeah thank you good. It's a different time zone for me than it is for you today yes yes and yes so it's just gone five past five so i think five past ten for you is that right yeah yeah <laughs> so as i do start say with every, with all my guests I kind of would like to get a sense of what exercise relationship was, your relationship with exercise was in terms of you growing up, like at, at school or at high school and then sort of going into, you know, college or whatever. Yeah. I had pretty athletic parents. Like they weren't athletes, but they would always go and exercise at the gym. And so I was always tagging along from a really young age back in the day when they had like step aerobics, when we would wear oh, guitars yeah. and like I remember. crazy little outfits. I remember. And, yeah. yeah. Jane Fonda. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> Not to age myself, right? No, um, no. And so I was going with my mom to the gym and doing all those floor classes and then eventually went into the machines and weights. And so I did that all through, I think, junior high and high school and then through college as well. I think when I went to graduate school, I dropped off the wagon for a couple of years just because I was so entrenched in school. And then since then, I've just always been doing some form of exercise, yoga, and then something else. I started yoga in 1999 for my own personal practice. Okay. Um, and yoga has been a part of my physical activity and then also other things. So I still go to the gym. I still do other activities as well as yoga. All right. Was there anything, a particular event that drew, drew you to yoga? You know, my mom did yoga. And okay. So I went initially because she did, and I thought it would be something I would be interested in. I went to the wrong type of yoga class for me because there's so many different styles. Yeah. And I got pretty turned off of it. And then so I didn't go back for a few years. And then eventually I went back on my own and found a style that I resonated with. Okay. And what was that journey like? I mean, how did you sort of find that style for you? Because obviously, maybe some of my listeners who haven't tried yoga, what advice would you give to them in terms of finding that right style? Because there are just so many disciplines. Yeah. And that's the thing. I think people think yoga and they put it in one box and mm. there's so many different forms of yoga. There's so many different styles. And even one teacher that teaches a specific style, if you go to 10 different teachers that teach that same style, you're going to have a different experience. Yeah. And so I really think it's important to go and find a teacher that you resonate with, somebody that speaks your language, that you just feel good. You walk out of there and it and it matches like your personality. I do sometimes think that type A people tend to go for the type A kind of yoga and the type B people go for the type B yoga, which is 
you know, not as active and more yin and more restorative. And I think it's really important to go for the style that we're not typically drawn to and go a little bit outside of the box. Okay. But I think initially it's just like find someone that you love that you jive with. Mm. And do you think, because I think I know you did say that you kind of had uh, some runners who've, or maybe the old runner you trained who you've done yoga, but do they tend to gravitate to a particular style or again, it can't sort of, you know, run some runners will go to one particular style, do Ashtanga or do something else. Yeah, I think runners are type A personality. And so they're going right. to resonate more with the vinyasa flow, the active ones, the ones that have a lot of movement mm. versus the ones that are a little bit slower. But I think any yoga is better than no yoga. So yeah. if you find someone that, that you like, that's better than nothing. And then maybe once you've gone down the path and you understand the yoga language because it has its own language, yeah. then branching out and exploring other types of teachers. Okay. Okay. Let's go sort of back to basics because I'm a total novice when it comes to no yoga. I, mean, I, I haven't really experienced yoga at, at all, but are there any sort of core principles across all of them? Yeah, I think with yoga, it's really important to just kind of get in touch with your body and go into your body and not be so focused as what's going to happen next and go into the next movement or, you know, comparing ourselves to others. Mm. And so I think in the beginning, everyone's just going to go to a yoga class and they're just going to try to figure out like, where's my right and my left and what is happening and like, what am I doing with my body and just trying to organize our body in space, which takes a little bit of time to get used to the language and, and the movements. And then as you move further into your yoga practice, you're going to start focusing the movements along with the breath. And that's super important. And that's not something that's going to come initially. That's going to come with a little bit of practice, mm -hmm. but the breath and the movement together are key for the success in yoga. And so I think that it's really just being present, being in your body and finding some joy with the movement in your body. And because you're going to be moving things that you haven't moved before, and you're going to be finding muscles that you haven't found in a long time. And you're going to be doing things that are awkward and uncomfortable. And it's just moving through that uncomfortableness and that awkwardness. Yeah. Instead of doing the same pattern movement that we do over and over again, which run, running is very yeah. rhythmic and patterned, just kind of straightforward in that, in that frontal plane yeah. action. Yeah. And it's really good to get outside of that box for our body to be more whole, more complete, stronger, more flexible. Yeah. Because I know when I was, I had one of my other guests who was a triathlete and, and this is a little different, but he said that people who cycle tend to have very inflexible hips and people who run because of the nature of their running, you know, have, and I, and I know, I know I suffer from it, have very inflexible ankles. So do you think, you know, we come because, you know, we've been doing this rep, rep, rep Repetitive exercise quite a lot. We come with all this package and it's hard to sort of uncoil ourselves in a way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, runners have tight hips, tight hamstrings, tight calves. And so twisting and turning, that kind of movement is really difficult. And I think that the 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 hurdle I think runners have to get over is that they're usually good at running. They're usually something that they're comfortable with. Mm. And so yoga is going to be something that they're going to struggle with in the beginning because, because of those tight spots. And so it's getting through that hurdle and like putting ourselves in a position where we're not comfortable, but we know in the long term it's going to be something that's good for us. Mm. But in the beginning, it's going to be really uncomfortable and they're not necessarily going to be like, quote, good at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are there any things that that when we come into, let's say, yoga class, our first yoga class, are there any things that we need to be, you know, as runners or haven't done it before, sort of any lessons that we sort of need to just sort of take on board? I'm just thinking like just to slow things down and just to take, and like you said, not watch what other people are doing, like those kind of things. Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing is if you, if you have any injuries or anything like that to let the teacher know 
And then yoga is a quiet practice. So during the whole practice, there's not a lot of talking. So just knowing that you're going to, when you enter the room, it's typically quiet through the whole class. And then, yeah, it's a really individual practice. So comparing yourselves to others is not going to put yourself in the good headspace. But it really is interesting to think about what are those thoughts that are coming up during your practice and noticing them. Mm-hmm. So notice if you are comparing yourselves to others or notice if you are feeling like you want to give up quickly, noticing yeah. if you are struggling with the breath and just noticing them without judgment mm-hmm. and knowing that props, a lot, of, a lot of yoga classes have props. So they have belts, straps, blankets, things like that. And it's not a weakness to use a prop. It's a strength because sometimes putting your hand on a block is going to make something easier, but it's also going to put your body in better alignment. And so it's better for your body. And so I think sometimes people have that thought that a prop is like a weakness and that 100% is not. Is there any one thing that people get wrong? <laughs> um, Usually. Is there a common yoga, thing? That, I think, in yeah, when they come into it for the first time. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of people are surprised when they come into a yoga class how challenging it will be for them. Yeah. And that there's this misconception when they look at yoga online that it looks really easy yeah. or but then they get into the class and they realize really simple movements are actually really yeah. difficult. Yeah. I think I find the opposite that I think it would be really hard. And I think the fact that I've taken that first step, I think even for, I don't know if you agree with me here that for men taking that first step into the room is kind of a bit of a leap forward. And yeah. that the fact that they've taken that first step, is it's fifty percent of the way there, as it were. Do you do you agree? Yeah, I mean, I love working with men, and men come into classes all the time, and it, it's really good. It's really humbling, and it's a really good way to get our egos in check. And it is. It's like it totally. There's more and more men coming, so there's not a stigma around that at all. And the one thing I would say is that yoga is different than a lot of other sports and activities because I think a lot of sports, by the time you hit 30, you're going to hit this downhill path. Mm. But yoga, if you start in your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, whatever age you begin, you're going to see progress. And so it's really cool. The tighter you are when you come into that class, the more you're going to see that progress from, I I couldn't touch my toes in the beginning of class. And now- I'm an inch or two further. And then weeks down the road, if you do it two to three times a week, even once a week, right? Mm. After a couple of months, you're going to notice that you could, you might actually be able to touch your toes and you couldn't before. So you're going to actually be able to see that progress. And there's not like an age cap on it, which Mm. is unique. I think, I think that's a, that's a really vital point because I know that, you know, as you get older, I mean, I'm 60 to so and as i as you as you get older then you're always thinking back oh well i used to run 10k in so and so time and and whereas with something like this type of exercise you can see that progress and then you you can see that improvement um yeah. whereas i know that when you are doing aerobic exercise when you're younger you can get faster or you know get fitter and then but then there comes a point where there comes diminishing returns where it you know that it that doesn't happen whereas like you said it's something that you're, you're it's a new it's a new discipline it's an it's a, something new where you can see that progress yeah i also think that there's with men they're surprised at how challenging it is because you are challenging those muscles that you don't typically use every day. And so it is strength building. So you're going to see your strength increase. Mm. You're going to see your flexibility increase. You're going to see your range of motion increase. And you'll be able to feel the benefits of it pretty quickly. I would say that most people, when they come to a class, by the end of the class, they can feel different. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. And that's even after day one. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Are they, I know you talked about the breath work. Why is that um, so so difficult initially? Why why do people get sort of sort of get anxiety about it, or do they get anxious? Yeah, about it? 
I think, I mean, I remember my first yoga class, the teacher was going through this flow and I literally couldn't, I mean, we know which our right and our left side are, but when you get in yoga and they're like right foot forward, left foot back, and you, it, it gets a little confusing. Mm. And so it, it does take some time to get used to the language. It does take some time to get used to what the shapes are in the practice and how our body moves in space. And so in the beginning of yoga, we're in our head a lot, just trying to figure out, we're looking around, are we doing this right? This is all new language. And so you're going to be comparing yourselves to others, but I don't think that's a negative. You're just trying to figure out if you're doing the right thing. Mm. And if something feels horrible, there's a good chance that you're not doing the right thing. If it feels good, you probably are. And then I always talk about the edge, whereas we want to push ourselves a little bit past our comfort zone, but never into pain. And that's where that growth happens. So you, you know, as a runner, not runner, when you do a forward fold, yeah, you're going to feel some tension in the back of your legs and it's not going to hurt. It's yeah. not going to be painful, but it's definitely going to push you a little bit. And so you want to go into those states, but a little bit longer than you normally would so that your muscles have time to lengthen and stretch out. And so it does take the breath when you're in that. So if you're, if you're hyperventilating your body's, your nervous system is right. like amped up and that's yeah. not what we want. Yeah. So, so you're not breathing can, right. Yeah. You're not breathing right. <laughs> but in the beginning, I wouldn't worry about the breath. I would just worry about like going, showing up, yeah. getting yourself in that space yeah. and getting used to the language and the movements. And then once that has become a little bit of second nature and you don't have to think so much, then you can dive into the breath piece. So if I, let's say I've moved on from day one to day two and I've come back, you've convinced me I'm coming back. Mm -hmm. Is it going to take the same format? Um, yes and no. So right. if you go say the same teacher, there's going to be some threads that are common and then there's going to be some new things. So a lot of times there's a lot of new shapes getting thrown in, but most yoga classes have sun salutations but I would say if you go to 10 different teachers, the sun salutations are going to be a little bit different. So if you keep going to that teacher, you're not going to have to think so much about some of the basic things that come up over and over again. Mm -hmm. I just thought because it's something that you kind of get used to, and you know, you think, yeah. oh, well, I know what's coming up, that kind of thing. But then maybe, like you said, it's not always going to be uniformly the, the same thing. Yeah, every class is going to be pretty different. <laughs> even with even with the same teacher, the same teacher might have a similar class, but every week they might be adding on or each class might be vastly different depending on the teacher that you go to. All right. But there will be like common language and common threads that if you went to 10 classes, you would start to recognize those shapes. Everyone knows about downward facing dog. Oh, That's yeah. That inverted V pose, right? Everyone knows about the warrior poses. And so there's some basics that are in every class, child's pose, things like that. Yeah. But you will be getting thrown new language from class to class. I just want to go back to the back to the basics again. How does yoga complement, you know, I know it's a very basic question, improve your flexibility, balance and strength? How how you know, how how does it? Well, balance is something that's really interesting because as we get older, we start to lose our our balance and our center. And yoga is something that can give that back to us pretty quickly. So if you think about yoga as opposed to other activities, we're doing a lot of things on one foot and we're working with our center of gravity and our balance and our stabilizing muscles. And so if you are older and you take a misstep and you trip, if you're doing yoga, you're more likely to be able to catch that trip yeah. than if you're not doing this because, and then balance is something that can improve really quickly over time as well with practice. And I feel like we don't, we don't connect our feet to the ground much because we're always in shoes, but in yoga, you're barefoot. And so your foot is touching the ground and you're activating the muscles in your feet. And you'll start to notice how your feet work with your stabilizing and your balancing. So that's pretty interesting. And you'll notice shifts in your balance pretty quickly. Right. Um, with flexibility, again, you're holding stretches, you're lengthening the muscles, you're holding them longer. And so with runners, we're shortening our muscles all of the time. Yes, running. that's true. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I would say 99% of the people that I know that are runners, they don't stretch or they do a token stretch, but they don't really stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, like all runners I talk to have this have this pattern. Um, yeah. And yeah. so we're going to increase our range of motion. I've had runners come to me, athletes, and say their coaches have said they need to come to a, a yoga teacher yeah. um, to improve their performance. And it has because their muth- mu- their muscles are lengthening and their strides be were yeah, they were able to yeah, take longer yeah, strides which is yeah. cool they could see how it was benefiting them yeah and runners don't stretch yeah so if we could stretch before practicing to warm up those muscles or after yeah. then that's going to aid in our recovery and your recovery time will be shorter yeah 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 and also injury prevention as well yeah yes. yeah yeah i was just interested in what you said about being in contact with the ground barefoot. Do you think people who are in, I don't know, third world, so-called third world countries who who don't wear shoes, do you think they have an an advantage that they are more in in tune or more, you know, yeah. connected? I because do. maybe I mean, us in the Western world in the in the in the first we although we have so many luxuries and we wear these clothes and shoes, oh, we become less and less stiffened up as it were sort of thing. Yeah. I spent a lot of time in developing countries. And if you look at, especially women, it's more noticeable with women. If you look at their feet, they are so much bigger and wider. Interesting. And because they're not squashing shoes all of the time. Yeah. And there's been tons of studies about grounding or they call it grounding or earthing where Mm. our actually our body has so much energy and putting our feet on the earth and on the ground, it, lets us discharge some of the energy and yeah. so often in in developed countries we're in shoes all day long we come home we might put slippers on and we're never barefoot right. um and right. so the really cool thing about yoga is yeah and i'll talk i could spend a whole class just talking about our feet yeah. and spreading our toes wide and contacting the earth with all four corners of our feet equally and just noticing do you put your weight on your heels do you put it on your toes and really evening that weight distribution on our feet and grounding our feet into the earth. And almost like if you were going to pick up the earth with your toes, so you're that engaged. And so when you do that, when you do that foot engagement on the ground in yoga, you will feel your muscles lengthen up and tighten up through your calves and all the way through your quads. Yeah. Yeah. And so I yeah. think we forget about our feet. Our feet yeah. are super important. Yeah, I mean, I just getting over an injury. Um, what they call policeman's heel, you know, plantar fasciitis. I, I don't, yeah, yeah, and I think that's either due to either incorrect running shoes or, or I don't know, just you know, all around because it's kind of like a repetitive, a kind of repetitive strain injury type of thing within the within the heel, and. I suppose with all these things, there's a chain, isn't there? And it kind of all travels up to, but yes, I know, I, I know talking about the developing countries. I mean, I'm, I'm half Nicaraguan and I know when we used to spend time in Nicaragua, we, in the morning, we used to, we're not, I'm not going off on a tangent. There is a point to this though, but um, you'd, you'd hear the ladies selling bread and they would have bread on their head. Yeah. And it'd be like, and then like, ramrod straight sort of thing and they'd be walking in barefoot but yeah. that's something you know is they must be so sort of like in tune with their body and everything so yeah. <laughs> i mean that's another thing that yoga definitely helps with our posture mm. um and if your posture is not correct when you're running it's definitely going to affect your body long term and your runtime yeah and so because yoga is so much having to do with body awareness it can correct some postural deficiencies. Yeah. Oh, good. Great. Or imbalances, postural imbalances. Yeah. So you are a vinyasa. I've got to get that vin, vinyasa, vinyasa flow. Yep. Vinyasa flow. So what is vinyasa flow? Vinyasa flow is a style of yoga where there's a lot of movement. And so if you think of it like rhythmic movement and it's paired with the breath. And so it's pretty fast paced. It would be pretty much 
for a type A kind of person Yeah, where it's constantly moving, constantly flowing. So some yoga, if you look at Hatha yoga, it's more stagnant right. um, where they'll do a pose, they'll hold it for a while, then they'll come out of that pose and they'll do another pose and hold it for a while. If you go to vinyasa flow class, there's lots of movement with not a lot of stops or long pauses. Right. So is it more for someone who has done yoga for an intermediary or or could someone who is a who's a complete beginner go into that? Yeah, a complete beginner could go into it. They might get a little lost in the beginning. Yeah. I think once I think it's better to go to a big beginner's class or even a Hatha class and learn all the shapes. And then yeah. once you feel comfortable, you don't have to think so much, then right. a, a flow class would be a better option. So is there a difference with the, because you said you talk about Hatha yoga, is there a difference in the type of positions and sequences between the two styles of yoga? Yeah, Hatha is just more, they'll do a shape for a while, they'll hold it, then they'll change into another shape and they'll hold it and then they'll do another one where vinyasa flow, it's just moving, Hmm. moving, 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 Hmm. and constantly moving from one to the other to the other to the other. So it's really rhythmic. Right. Okay. So it's a bit like a dance. Is that kind of thing? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And your your heart rate will get a lot or kind of your average heart rate will get higher. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a good workout. If you're going to look at like, I want to go to yoga and get a good workout and I want to sweat and get my heart rate up and I want to get stronger and more flexible then vinyasa flow is a, is a great option Mm. where there is benefit from holding poses for a long time too. And those can be incredibly challenging and strength building as well. It's just Mm. a different style. Okay. So would you describe it as the more aerobic, whereas the the Hatha would be more sort of anaerobic? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's a wrap for another exhilarating episode of Brian's Run Pod. Thanks for tuning in, folks. As always, we've got your back with all things running. And next week, get ready for some awesome beginner hints and tips to kickstart your running journey. Oh, and before we sign off, exciting news. We're now available on YouTube. So whether you're pounding the pavement or chilling at home, you can catch us there too. Plus, we have a new feature on the podcast. You can now send me a message. Yep, you heard it right. Brian's Ron Pod has become interactive with the audience. If you look at the top of the episode description, tap on send us a text message. You can tell me what you think of the episode or alternatively what you would like covered. If you're lucky, I might even read them out on the podcast. Hey, if you want to keep up with the latest updates, behind the scenes fun and even some exclusive content, make sure to follow me on social media. You can find me on Twitter or should I say X at Brian's Rompod. We've also just launched a shiny new Facebook page. Simply search for Brian's Rompod and give us a like. And don't forget to hop on over to Instagram where you can catch all our visual adventures at Brian's Rompod. For those of you who love diving deep into the episodes, head over to our website www.brianesrompod.co.uk and there you'll find detailed show notes, handy chapter markers, make it too easy to navigate through our favourite discussions. Please leave a review as it will always help find peel others find this podcast. Music is by Happy Days by Stock Audio, not forgetting artwork by Alice Patterson. Till next week, thanks again for listening. 